Hi, second graders. My name is Miss Curry, and I'm so excited to be with you guys for a second reading lesson. You guys might remember from our last lesson that we started talking about opinion articles. I want you to think back to our last time together. And what do you remember about opinion articles and about what we read? Also be thinking about what does an author try to do in an opinion article? I bet that a lot of you are remembering from the last time that we talked about a couple of different things like nonfiction, which is writing that gives us true information about real things. We learned that an opinion article is where the author gives his or her opinion or point of view and tries to persuade the reader to agree with them. You also learned that an opinion is something that a person feels very strongly about. And we learned that writers support their opinions with reasons, which are important ideas that support the author's opinion. As we're reading and listening to our opinion article today, I want you all to be making sure that you are thinking about what are the really important ideas here? And what does the author really want me to remember? As you're discussing your ideas with a partner who could be a family member, it could be a pet, it could be a favorite stuffy or favorite toy, but as you're discussing your important ideas with your partner, I want you to think about how you can make those sentences into a discussion. You might use some things like, the author wants me to remember, the author's opinion is, one reason is, or another reason is. Those are some ideas for how you might start your discussion with your partner. If you have other ideas, that's great too. Okay, before we get started with learning today, please make sure you have two things. You need to have your partner, who, like I said, could be a family member, a pet, a stuffy, a toy, and make sure that you either have your um, literacy extension packet or just a piece of paper. That works fine too. We'll be doing some writing today, so I want you to make sure you have something to write with and something to write on, whether that's your literacy extension packet or a piece of paper, either is fine. If you need to pause the video, you can. I'll also give you a second to go grab those things. All right, so like I said, we are working on opinion articles, which is an article or some writing where the author gives their opinion or their point of view about a topic. Today, we are going to be reading another opinion article. Our goals today are I can hear and discuss an opinion article, I can explore important ideas in an opinion article, and I can give reasons for my thinking. So last time we read an article called Zoos Are Good for Animals. This time we're going to read an article called Zoos Are Not Good for Animals. You might be noticing that the topic of these two articles is the same. The topic is zoos. But the opinion in these two articles seems like it's probably different, okay? We had zoos are good for animals and today we'll be reading zoos are not good for animals. If you can follow along in your literacy extension packet, go ahead and open it up to the correct page. And if you're going to follow along with me here on the screen, that is okay too. Today I'm going to be reading this article two times. The first time we're going to stop and talk about the things that we're learning from the article. The second time I read it, we're going to stop and discuss important ideas. So starting at the beginning, read the title, Zoos are not good for animals. 
Imagine that you are visiting a zoo. You notice a lion in its cage pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The word pacing means walking and back and forth means going from one side to another and back. I'll read that sentence one more time. You notice a lion in its cage pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The lion seems restless and unhappy, and it probably is. The word restless means unable to get comfortable. So the lion seems restless and unhappy, and it probably is. Experts say that when a lion, tiger, or other animal paces in its cage like that, it often means that the animal is bored or upset. Does that make you feel bad? If so, you are not alone. When the author says you are not alone, they mean that you are not the only person that feels that way. Other people feel the same way you do. So, if so, you are not alone. Many believe that keeping animals in zoos is cruel and unnatural. The word cruel means mean. So many people believe that keeping animals in zoos is cruel and unnatural. For one thing, some of the enclosures in zoos are much too small for the animals. The word enclosures means the place where the animal lives or sort of like a cage. So many people, oh, for one thing, some of the enclosures in zoos are much too small for the animals. Many zoos try to make their enclosures look like the animals' natural habitats. But just because it looks right to us does not mean it is good for the animals. Take elephants, for example. In the wild, elephants walk as much as 30 miles every day looking for food and stopping at watering holes. Watering holes are things like ponds, lakes, or other bodies of water where animals drink from. I'll read that sentence again. In the wild, elephants walk as much as 30 miles every day, looking for food and stopping at watering holes. Not even the best zoos can build enclosures large enough for elephants to live as they do in their natural habitat. Let's stop there. I want you to think, what have you learned so far? Turn and tell your partner. Did you share with your partner? I hope so. Some of you might have said something like, I learned that elephants walk 30 miles every day. Or some of you might have said, I learned that enclosures or the places where the animals live at a zoo are sometimes too small for them. Whatever you said in your discussion with your partner, thank you for sharing. Let's keep reading. So we just read that not even the best zoos can build enclosures large enough for elephants to live as they do in their natural habitat. In the wild, animals learn how to survive when they are very young. For example, a young leopard learns how and where to hunt by watching its mother. When they are raised in zoos, leopards and other young animals never learn these and other important skills. They do not have to because humans feed and protect them. This is not a good thing. Most animals raised in zoos can never go back to their natural homes. Let's stop right there. What did you learn in this part of the article? Turn and tell your partner. I bet some of you said that you learned that animals learn important skills from their mothers. Whatever you shared, great job. Let's keep reading. So we just read, this is not a good thing. Most animals raised in zoos can never go back to their natural homes. Some people say that zoos teach people about animals. Others argue that we do not have to put animals in cages to learn about them and that they belong in their natural habitat. Awesome job following along with that first reading, second graders. For this second reading, 
we are going to be thinking and writing about the important ideas in this article. So make sure you have your writing uh, tools ready to go. Zoos are not good for animals. Imagine that you are visiting a zoo. You notice a lion in its cage pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The lion seems restless and unhappy. And it probably is. Experts say that when a lion, tiger, or other animal paces in its cage like that, it often means that the animal is bored or upset. Does that make you feel bad? If so, you are not alone. Many people believe that keeping animals in zoos is cruel and unnatural. For one thing, some of the enclosures in zoos are much too small for the animals. Many zoos try to make their enclosures look like the animal's natural habitat. But just because it looks right to us does not mean it is good for the animals. Tink elephants, for example. In the wild, elephants walk as much as 30 miles every day, looking for food and stopping at watering holes. Not even the best zoos can build enclosures large enough for elephants to live as they do in their natural habitat. In the wild, animals learn how to survive when they are very young. For example, a young leopard learns how and where to hunt by watching its mother. When they are raised in zoos, leopards and other young animals never learn these and other important skills. They do not have to because humans feed and protect them. This is not a good thing. Most animals raised in zoos can never go back to their natural homes. Some people say that zoos teach people about animals. Others argue that we do not have to put animals in cages to learn about them and that they belong in their natural habitat. So, thinking about what we just read, what is the author's opinion about zoos? Remember, an opinion is something that a person feels strongly about. So what is the author's opinion about zoos? Turn and tell your partner. What did you share with your partner? Some of you might have said something like, the author doesn't like zoos. Other people might have said, the author thinks zoos are bad places for animals. Some of you might have even said, the author's opinion is that zoos make animals really unhappy. Whatever idea you shared, great job sharing. Now I want you to think, what is an important idea about zoos that the author wants you to remember? I'll ask that again. What is an important idea about zoos that this author wants you to remember? You don't have to turn and tell your partner this time. Go ahead and get out your packet or your writing paper. In your packet, you can look for a page like this. It says an important idea the author wants us to remember about zoos. I want you to take just a couple of minutes to write down your ideas, and I'm going to be writing down my ideas, too, on my piece of paper. So think, what are the important ideas, or an important idea, that the author wants us to remember about zoos? Go ahead and start writing. If you're writing and you need some sentences to help you, you can use some of these to get started with.
All right, hopefully you've had enough time to write down a couple of your ideas. If you need a little extra time and you're watching this on YouTube or on another computer source, you can pause the video and finish your writing. Otherwise, I'm gonna share with you guys what I wrote. You might have written something similar or you could have written some ideas that were very different and that's okay too. So I said, one important idea is that zoo animals live in enclosures that are too small. That's an idea that the author shared in the article. Another idea that I thought of was the author wants us to know that zoo animals can't learn to feed themselves. Did you guys come up with a similar idea or one of the same ideas that I came up with? Or did you come up with something totally different? Practicing writing our ideas about our reading is a great way to think deeper about our reading. Great job, second graders. Let's look at a few of our vocabulary words. This is a, P, a part of the article that we read last time called Zoos Are Good for Animals. I'm going to reread this part of the article and I want you thinking about the word conserve or conservation. So it says, zoos protect animals too. Animals in zoos are safe from hunters. Zoos are also safe places for animals whose habitats are being threatened. By protecting animals, zoos help endangered species survive. In the last 30 years, zoos working with other conservation groups have helped save black-footed ferrets, California condors, red wolves, and other endangered species. This article has the word conservation in it. Part of that word conservation is conserve. Just from reading that part of this article, what do you think that word might mean? The word conserve means to protect something from harm or protect something from being wasted or used up. It can mean both of those things. In the article we just read, it means to protect the animals from harm. A time that you might use this word, or an example of how you might use this word, would be, I turn off the faucet when I brush my teeth to conserve water. That's something that a lot of people do. So I want you to think, why is it important to conserve animals? Some of you might be thinking we conserve animals, or we have conservation efforts for animals so that we can keep them safe, and make sure that they live long and happy lives. I want you to think of these examples. I have a friend named Norton, and we're trying to figure out if he is conserving or not conserving. So think of this. Norton leaves the water running in the sink after he brushes his teeth. Is Norton conserving water? Why do you think so? Go ahead and finish that sentence with your partner. Norton is conserving water or is Norton is not conserving water because. What did you come up with? Some of you might have said something like Norton is not conserving water because he's wasting the water while he brushes his teeth. Let's look at another example. Norton turns off the lights when he leaves a room. Is Norton conserving electricity? Why do you think so? Go ahead and finish that sentence. What did you come up with that time? Some of you might have said Norton is conserving electricity because he's not wasting it by leaving it on when he's not using it. Awesome job, second graders. Let's look at a different word. Our next word is appreciate. Appreciate means to be grateful or thankful for something. For example, I appreciate when my dad makes my favorite food for dinner. You might also appreciate something that someone in your family does for you. So I want you to imagine 
that someone you have just met acted rudely toward you. Would you appreciate that? Why or why not? Go ahead and finish that sentence. I would appreciate it because, or I would not appreciate it because. I wonder what you said. You might have said something like, I would not appreciate it if someone acted rudely toward me because it would make me feel sad and I would not be grateful for that. Let's try another example. The school librarian offers to help you find the book you are looking for. Would you appreciate it if the librarian helped you find the book? Why or why not? Go ahead and share that with your partner. What did you come up with? You could have said something like, I would appreciate it because I'd be very happy that I got the book I was looking for. Awesome job practicing those vocabulary words, second graders. I hope that you can find a way to use those in your writing this week or maybe search for them in your reading too. This week, I want you to continue to practice reading both fiction and nonfiction books. Use the thinking about my reading chart to monitor your own reading and check in with yourself about how you're doing with your reading skills. Make sure that you're selecting just right books. If a book that you pick is too tough or maybe too easy for you, think about picking a different book for yourself to read. Also make sure that you're always thinking about what you are reading. What is it about? What are you wondering? What have you learned? You could also be asking yourself, like, what am I visualizing? What am I inferring? If you need books to read at home, you can always check out websites on the Seattle Public Schools website, like Kids Read, Pebble Go, or Tumble Book. Simply go to the Seattle Public Schools website, select Student Family Portals, click on Academic Tools, and you can choose from these. You can also check out things like Scholastic Learn at Home and ReadWorks for additional reading suggestions and ideas. Make sure that you're practicing writing about your reading and determining the important ideas in your reading this week. You can do this with fiction and nonfiction books, just like we talked about. Okay, you can practice writing this in your literacy extension packet or you can always practice on just a piece of paper. That's what I decided to do this week. So for example, this week I read a book called The Galapagos Islands. While I was reading it, I was thinking, I was wondering about the Galapagos Islands. I was thinking, where are they? What are they? Why are they important? I was thinking, are they near the ocean or is that a lake? I was wondering lots of different things. When I was done, I was also thinking about the things that I learned. I learned where they were, and I learned that they are near the ocean because they're islands. Like I said, we also wanna practice doing some writing about our readings. So, like I said, you can either do it in your literacy extension packet or just on a piece of paper like I did. So on my piece of paper, I wrote, today I read The Galapagos Islands by Greg Rosa. The topic of this book is a place in Ecuador called the Galapagos Islands. An important idea the author wants me to remember is that these islands are very special and unique, or are a very special and unique place. One reason is that there are many types of animals that only live on the Galapagos Islands. I look forward to having you guys check in with yourselves about your own reading by practicing these same writing skills. I know that you are all excellent learners and will continue to do that all week using either just regular paper or working in your packet. Awesome job today, second graders. I am so excited to have another lesson with you later on. Make sure that you're checking back in so that we can finish up our unit on opinion writing and on nonfiction informational texts.